A celebration more than 50 years in the making. Italy is once again lifting the trophy as European football champions after their win over England in a dramatic penalty shootout. Thundering cheers from this crowd in Rome as the Azzurri claimed their first major title in 15 years Sunday and their first European Championship since 1968. Those celebrations repeated in cities across Italy from Milan down to Naples. But it was a much different mood of course among England fans as they left Wembley Stadium in London. They had hoped their team would finally end their long quest for a major international title. It was not to be. And we are tracking all the developments. Barbie Nadeau is standing by in Rome with reaction there. Salma Abdelaziz is live in London. But first we head to World Sports Alex Thomas for more on this dramatic final. Good to see you Alex. So what a game. Talk us through all the highlights here. Rosemary, it was 55 years between the two times that England's men's football team have been in a major final, the 1966 World Cup, which they won, and now the 2020 Euro final, delayed from last year by the COVID pandemic. So no wonder tens of thousands of people flocked here to England's National Stadium at Wembley in northwest London just to soak up the atmosphere. They kick off at 8 o'clock in the evening local time, uh, giving fans hours to drink and be merry. And maybe the atmosphere tipped over the edge, and we'll tell you more about that in a moment. But as far as inside the stadium is concerned, where 75% of the 90,000 capacity were allowed in, so well over 60,000 watching Luke Shaw give England an early lead in the opening minutes, then Italy after the initial shell shock of the atmosphere and the occasion getting to them, getting back into the game, Leo Bonucci equalising for the Italians in the second half. There were no further goals in half an hour of extra time, so to decide this title, it went to a penalty shootout. England missing three successive kicks, Marcus Rashford, Bakayo Saka, uh, and also Jaden Sancho, either having their, their penalties saved by Donnarumma in the Italian goal, or in Marcus Rashford's case, hitting the post. Misery for England in a penalty shootout again, although credit to them for getting this far. An absolute joy for Italy and their coach, Roberto Mancini, who has really revived the team since they failed to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. Mancini admitting he didn't want to see it go to spot kicks either. It was quite unpleasant to have to go all the way to the penalty shootout. I think we would have deserved to finish the game earlier than that, but we are very happy for Italians. Italians living abroad, there were many at the stadium today. Italians all over the world, and especially Italians all across Italy, because I think we have given them a wonderful month of success and joy, and we are very happy about that. So Italy, European football champions for the second time and the first time since 1968. They've also won the World Cup on four occasions, so they really are back on top of the soccer world. Credit to them, they go back to Italy for celebrations later on Monday. But the one sound note I mentioned earlier, Rosemary, was the behaviour of some England fans. Yes, a minority, but quite a few of them, not just here at Wembley, but in the tourist hotspots in the centre of London, Piccadilly Circus, Leicester Square, uh, Trafalgar Square, there where there was a screening, bottles being thrown, abuse, fights breaking out, and many tried to get into Wembley without a ticket. Some even succeeded. The authorities initially saying it wasn't a big deal, then later saying fans had got in there and they were trying to identify them and throw them out of the game. Uh, and lots of reports on social media of small children uh, being absolutely terrified by some of the scenes they've, they've seen there. Uh, and we just witnessed ourselves on street level here, the absolute carnage left by all the fans who had been so joyous earlier in the day, but the atmosphere did get on the wrong side uh, towards the end of Sunday, Rosemary. Yeah, totally unacceptable. Alex Thomas uh, outside Wembley Stadium. Many thanks for bringing us up to date on the game. Appreciate it. Well, as Alex mentioned, Italy's victory played out in front of some 60,000 spectators at Wembley Stadium. And there were some ugly scenes outside the gates. Police say they arrested dozens of people for a variety of offences. Police are also investigating offensive and racist social media comments directed 
toward members of the England team. So let's uh, bring back CNN Salma Abdelaziz in London and Barbie Nadeau in Rome. Good to see you both. So Salma, I do want to start with you. Uh, let's talk about how England fans are coping with this crushing defeat, but also give us the latest on the arrests made over racism against players and then these shocking and vile, the vile abuse that uh, was online. Absolutely, Rosemary. You have three players, uh, Sancho, Rashford and Saka, as you heard there, they did miss those penalty kicks and those three players are now facing absolutely disgusting social media abuse right now. Uh, Saka, I just want to note, is 19 years old. That's something that's trending, trending actually on Twitter right now. Hashtag he's only 19 years old. That is how some England fans are responding. Now, unfortunately, we know that racist abuse against sports players is nothing new. It is something that sporting bodies are still tackling and still fighting but what is new here is this England team and I'll tell you why they have come in at a very sensitive moment and chosen to really take a stance and use their platform at the beginning of this tournament uh, the manager uh, Gareth Southgate penned a letter to the nation dear England where he and I am summarizing here but he essentially said I want my players to advocate and to fight for the causes that are near and dear to their hearts and that is for many of these players racial justice social equality that is what is important to them Southgate wants this team to represent an Englishness that is progressive that is open-minded a sense of nationalism that is inclusive and there was this honeymoon period really where you were seeing pictures of the players who come from all these different backgrounds with hashtag choose love with immigration uh, you know this team couldn't exist without immigration all of these very positive slogans in this morning waking up and seeing this very vile abuse against these players this really terrible backlash against the black lives matter movement which is something that is not uh, isolated to this incident this country has faced a huge backlash to the Black Lives Matter movement. These players were booed when they took a knee at times by some uh, some of these fans. So a lot of anti-racist groups this morning tweeting out for people to be careful, to be cautious, because they have seen social media uh, threats, not just against these players, but against people of color in general. So a fear of a sense of fear as well, a sense of exclusion, of marginalization. And the question really now, Rosemary, is yes, these players did lose the team, did lose the match rather, but there was something greater that they were trying to win here they were trying to win acceptance a sort of greater sense of fairness and equality for in this country that was not going to be won overnight but have they at least begun to make gains on that even though they've lost the match rosemary there will be consequences for that uh, racist abuse online and elsewhere of course at the game uh, thanks for that and barbie italy's fans of course celebrating their big win what are they telling you you know, the, the excitement of last night has just, you know, turned to national pride this morning. There's just such a sense of accomplishment, such a sense of togetherness. And, you know, you have the, football, soccer is really part of the Italian DNA. And you, in events like last night, you really see that come together. Now, we've got to uh, listen to a couple, uh, what a couple of fans had to say. An infinite joy. It reminds us of 2006 when we beat France. And in the penalty shootout, after 15 years, the penalty shootout is always more beautiful, magnificent. You know, and that's really how everybody feels. Just watching this, there was such silence in the city across the country after England scored that first goal early on. And when the, the, the game finally ended in, in penalties, there was just an eruption of national pride and celebration in this country. And that's something Italy has needed for, you know, after the pandemic and it's needed for a long, long time since they didn't qualify for the World Cup in 2018. And I think we're going to see this pride carry through, not just on the soccer field, but I think it'll, it'll translate to the country as a whole, Rosemary. It has certainly been a difficult year. This is exactly what Italy needed. Sam Abdelaziz live in London, Bobby Nadeau in Rome. Many thanks to you both.